So you're in school and you learn basic operations and numbers. You call them addition and multiplication. Then later, you learn about matrices and operations on them. You also call addition and multiplication. Around the same time, you learn about vectors and you also learn about operations on them. You call one addition and you call the others multiplication by a scalar, the scalar product, and the cross product. Now you might say to yourself, why call them with these names if they aren't the same operation? What do number addition and vector addition have in common to justify calling them both addition? There is no perfect answer to this question, because names are mainly conventions, which can have multiple justifications behind them. But, from my personal experience, I can infer one specific rule of thumb. Let's say we have a set of objects A and two binary operations on A. Let's call the first one the square operation and the second one the triangle operation. But then we notice that one operation is distributive on the other. By convention, we will say the square operation is the addition and the triangle operation is the product, and we give them notations according to this naming. So is it this simple? We can see this definition easily works for the usual addition and product of numbers, the addition and cross product of 3D vectors, and the addition and product of square matrices. Let's remark that a cross product and matrix product aren't generally commutative. The examples here illustrate this. Because of this, we have to add one additional criterion, which is to say the distributivity from the right, as opposed to the distributivity from the left. Note we have left out the multiplication of a vector by a scalar, the scalar product, and the product between matrices of different dimensions. This will lead us to the following remark about the nature of addition versus multiplication. Addition is generally between two objects of the same nature, to create another object of the same nature. Multiplication, in the other hand, can combine two objects of different natures into a third object, which can also be of a different nature from the two previous. Let's say we have three sets, not necessarily different, A, B, and C. For each set, we can define an operation we would call addition. And now we can create an operation of multiplication that respects the following. It takes one element from A, another from B, and returns an element from C. And when we write the conditions of distributivity, we notate the additions accordingly. So, for the multiplication of a vector of dimension n by a scalar, we would have a equals r and b equals c equals rn. In practice, we can deduce by observing the nature of the objects that two additions are different. So we don't really need to differentiate them using an index notation. Now that we know what a product is, Let's create some. Can we define a multiplication on 2D vectors that returns another 2D vector? Yes, no problem. Here's an example you might already have thought of. We take the vectors a, b, and c, d from R2, and we define the product as the vector a, c, b, d. Let's call it the direct product. I let to you how to generalize it to higher dimensions, and also to prove it is distributive and vector addition. Here's another one, a bit more creative. So we take the vectors a, b, and c, d from R2. We notice we can rewrite the vector a, b as the matrix a, b, b, a. And then we just do a regular matrix product. Let's call it the clever product. Can you guess how I would define it to dimension n? Let's make a final remark. Generally, there can be multiple different operations of multiplication, that are distributive over the same operation of addition. The direct and clever product are both distributive over the usual vector addition, for example. Can you come up with another one? So this was my first math video ever. I have a ton of ideas for videos, so don't forget to subscribe. To give you an idea, I would like to make videos about original approaches to familiar math topics, how to think about mathematical abstractions the right way, the mathematics behind music theory, and some artistic projects, often dealing with math in some way. Thank you for watching.